Hello, happy Wednesday, everybody. I see a few people have joined us. So happy to have you here today. Hey, Gail, how are you doing today? I've already lost a needle. No, I haven't lost a needle. Whew. For a minute there, I thought I'd lost a needle already. It's been a week, people. It has been a week. Hey, Michelle. I only, this morning before taking the photo for the thumbnail, was the first time that I cleaned off my desk from last week. Hey, Lori. Hi, Andrea. Good evening to you. Hi, Joanne. Good afternoon. Um, I am like burnt out, absolutely burnt out uh, and not done yet with getting the stuff ready for the shop. But it's funny. I realized it, last year I was doing the same thing, getting ready for a live sale. And this way it's not going to be a live sale. I'm going to stock the shop and I will have um, everything. All the hard work is happening ahead of time and everything will be ready to ship. So that's good. But Jiminy, I'm tired. I'm at the point now where I have to um, put everything, put the photos in the right formatting, and then I have to get everything linked in the spreadsheet so my son can upload it to the shop. Hey, Susan. Hello. How are you doing today? So I said I need something easy, plus the fact that I can get these things kind of out of the way. Maybe I'll paint them next to, because um, of course, you know, on top of getting everything ready for the shop, my mom's coming to visit in three weeks. And so I need to clean up the mess and be able to spend some time with her. I will show you a couple little things I've been working on. I'll show you my little baskets. I'm having so much fun. And I will, a couple people have dropped me notes and asked me, to do a video on how I start and everything. So um, I needed a simple thing I could do tomorrow. That's probably what I will do. This one I made from my knots. And this one I'm working on now is from the cordage I've made from threads. I've got all kinds of ideas of things, but these are, they're very simple. It's a nice thing to do uh, in front of the TV at night for me. I'm really enjoying having this. It does go through a lot of thread though. So be aware from that. So yeah, these are backgrounds that will either be journal, they can be journal covers or backgrounds for other things or vessels as I showed recently. And I'm just, um, I'm looking for us. Yes, yeah, slow stitch pieces into vessels. I mean, right? You know, why not just take, let's see, let's grab one that's a little more stitched together. You know, here's a piece of lace that I have been stitching. These are just little tiny pieces of lace. I could fold this over stitch it and put a bottom on it and have a little vessel, you know, or I could make it a taller vessel. You know, it gives us something else to do with these little projects. Hey, Terry. Or we could, um, hey, Fiona. Oh, playing with peaches. Wow. So you're going to do a lot of canning. You could take your small little, um, let's see if I can find... It's like everything's balanced so precariously right now. Okay, use your imagination. This is just a piece of fabric, say that you've you know dyed or done something to. And this is a slow stitch something. Hey, there's Big Mama Sandy. Hi, Judy. So you could, if you want to make a vessel, what if you've got your painted fabric, you know, you're going to be able to make a vessel like that. And then you can take your slow stitch thing and add it to, and then you've got a fancy vessel. Michelle said, I've made twine out of fabric and then include it on a glass container. Yeah, and there's just so many options. I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a lot of... Um, all right, I already put my needle down in the wrong place. Um, there's one of these needles. I threaded three needles, and I want the one that's got the longest thread. All right, um, I think this is the one that I did crazy. I was I don't know what I was thinking, but I cut it way too long. But I have so much solid color fabric left. I think I'm going to dye a bunch, and then I will... Um, 
I will make it, I'll make some, use some that I can make some cordage out of and then some that I will make some vessels out of and then some books. I do have a pin cushion. I've got, I've got a big pin cushion here, but you know what? This one I've decided is a pain. This is my, I'm really liking this little one and see, I've got all my needles threaded so I can work on my orange bowl later. Oh, you're bottling, freezing, and licking your arms. <laughs> what I'm trying to get in the habit of doing is threading things ahead of time. And I did put it back in the pin cushion. I just couldn't. I, I tell you, people, my brain is fried. It is so fried. That's why, you know, I, I changed my mind like five times this morning what I was going to do. Normally, I think about what I'm going to do for you guys the day before. I didn't. All right, part of this is stitched down and part of it isn't. So now the trick is, and I am stitching these down because as we discovered last week, was not so much fun uh, painting them when they weren't stitched down. So now we know. Let's see, that one's stitched. So we're just gonna go the other way. So yeah, I'm... Uh, and then this morning I got up to respond to a comment on my blog and my entire website had crashed and my son actually got it back up again really fast. But I was like, I have no idea. We don't need that when we're thinking about getting everything into the shop. I just had to tell myself, I don't have to get it all in right now. I just want to get the stuff that's already packaged and then I can next month I can do another thing. It won't be quite so overwhelming, but Honestly, I want to get out of, you know, merchandise mode so I can get back to arcs. I've got so many ideas. Big Mama has Big Daddy doing. I hope he's doing well. So let me know what you guys are working on. Who's doing what? Let's get inspired. Yeah, one step at a time. You're right, Sue. That's all we can do. And some, you know, I was going like, you know, so 900 miles an hour. He's doing better. Oh, good. Thank you, Sandy. Hey, Barbie. How are you doing today? You know, and I just, it's terrible to be thinking here we are, you know, tomorrow's going to be September 1st. I'm already thinking about the end of the year and it's like, oh. Not that we do a whole lot, you know, for holidays and stuff like that. Some peach juice for decompressing or for depressing win winter days. That will bring, make you right back into summertime, huh? Sandy's working in my junk journal paradise. Sue says I need some meditation stitching to do. Just have to settle on a foundation and or color scheme. Yeah, you know, I saw um, something on Pinterest this morning and I really loved it. Um, the gal, gosh, the installation she did was like, I don't know, um, a gazillion yards long. But she was doing, um, it was just couching and it looked so relaxing. She just had a um, piece of foundation fabric. And she was just taking additional fabric, kind of like we see in those chindi rugs. And she couched it just with simple straight stitches on here and, you know, different colored fabric, different colored threads. And it's just, oh, it was, it was beautiful and looks so relaxing to be doing. Michelle bought some distress inks and I've been spraying them on fabric, made a small fabric book out of them. Nice. Terry's making Christmas ephemera for my Etsy shop. You've got some new things in your shop, Terry. Make sure you share your shop. Barbie is starting a new altered book. Andrea is doing clothes repairs. Are they being, are you being fancy with your clothes repairs or functional? Michelle said, I also bought some fabric paint and plan on painting different fabrics with it soon. Yay. Yeah, that my, my list of, whoops, did I go the wrong way? No of to do things, things I want to do rather than things I have to do is so long, so long. 
But, you know, something like this, if I could just get them all painted, and I really am thinking I might make a lot of them into vessels. But if I get them painted, it's going to be um, where I could at least just do some, you know, feather stitching and knots on them. Sue says, I got a new quilt started, but hit a speed bump and have to sort that out. Oh, speed bumps aren't fun. Functional so I can finish my paid in pencil. Okay, good, good, Andrea. Sometimes we just got to do the repairs. And I want to get back to the class because I am super excited about the class, but I need um, the mental brain with to uh, finish it. Hey, Thunder. Oh, I'm glad you popped in to say hi. I miss you too. Hope you're doing okay. Drop me a message when you have a chance. I'd love to hear what's going on with you. You have been posting some more though. Got some, um, I've been seeing some things over on Instagram. Barbie said, oh, I thought of you guys this weekend. I was in an art store, looked in their clearance section. I found two really big bottles of fabric medium, 90% off. What a deal. What a deal. I was um, prepping some, some stuff for a basket. I had a bunch of painted fabric, and I remembered I had just painted it with paint water. You know, and it's not, whoops, well, I don't know what I did there, but that definitely wasn't what I wanted. Um, it's not too stiff. You know, the paint water without a fabric medium was just fine. Brain power is, a highly, underest is highly underestimated when it comes to creative endeavors. You got that right, Sue. Yeah, Barbie, did you buy it? That's the question. Did you buy it or did you leave it on the shelf there for somebody else to come along? <laughs> Yeah, brain power, and, and the brain power comes from the rest, right? And I have been getting good rest, so th there is that. I'm grateful for that. Just a few things on inter Okay, yeah, message me. Love you too. It's been too long. But I am trying to work smarter. Like I was... Um, I'm rereading this book called Effortless and okay, you bought both of them. Good. Otherwise, you know, we were going to have to have a conversation. Okay. I'm not even sure where I need to go next. I don't worry about traveling on the back side of the fabric. I tell you, I did not think sorting out all that fabric stuff was going to take that long. Um, wait a minute. Fiona says, I'm making a patchwork house jacket from my rusted and ice dyed fabric. It's an old sweatshirt as a base and batting as a padding. Oh, that sounds great. Gosh, would love to see some of your work, Fiona. If you ever want to email me anything that, that you want me to post in the Facebook group, I'm happy to do that so people can see more of your work. So anyway, so this book I'm reading, Effortless, is not about like trying to be like super speedy through everything, but it's about um, trying to get into that zone that you know we're always in, or, or not that we're always in, that we want to be in because time passes, you look up and you realize that you've been arting for you know hours and you don't even know where the time went. And I, that's just that, that state of flow that is absolutely marvelous. And... So when you're looking at something that you're dreading doing, it's like, well, how can you make this easier? How can you make this fun? How can you make this something that you want to do rather than dreading it? Do I like to stitch on denim? That's a great question. If I've got just a single layer of denim, and it's funny because I just found a huge bin of a whole bunch of denim. A single layer like this of denim, you know, it's nice. 
you have to make sure you have a really sharp needle because it can be um, frustrating. I mean, I, I did jean, a jean jacket and a chambray shirt years ago back in high school because that was all the thing back then. What's nice about denim is it usually doesn't need a stabilizer. You know, it's stiff enough um, for the kind of work that I do. When you've got multiple layers, it can get kind of hard <laughs> for me. Um, but I think if you wash it a whole bunch too, so you get that worn feeling, Hey, Barbara, how are you doing today? So like if you have a bunch of denim scraps that you want to sew on, I would throw them in one of those like laundry bags. And I would, every time you do the laundry, I would throw them through the washing machine in the dryer a few times just to soften them up which is what I like to do with a lot of my fabric because then you also get that frayed edge look. We're doing simple stuff today, Barbara, because my brain is melting. Oh, and then it's supposed to be so hot. It's going to be really hot up at your place, isn't it, Barbara? Well, I don't know what I was thinking when I stitched this down, but I am all over the place and it's okay. It is okay. Fiona, so if I ever learn to post on Facebook, you will get bored until then. I will say. <laughs> it's easy to post on Facebook. It's almost too easy to post on Facebook. Or are you on Instagram, Fiona? I can't remember. I just love seeing everybody's work and getting, I always get inspired. Oh, not today. Oh, nice. Barbara. Yeah, this weekend, I guess it's supposed to get really hot. Barbie says I bought some dyed wool recently, then learned I don't like touching wool. Oh, wow. Isn't that interesting? That's super important to know whether you like the feel of a fabric. Wow. Did you buy a lot of it? Maybe you can sell or trade with somebody. I have that like with certain books that have um, a certain cut. They do something to the cover and it just kind of creeps me out. Michelle says, I really like the look of denim. Yeah. Gail says, Barbie, I get all itchy and my hands break out if I touch wool for very long. Oh, wow. I'm glad I don't have that issue. I know, Fiona, it was all the thing to do little flowers on the jean jacket. Sue said, I used to do needlepoint with wool yarns. Now I can't handle it. Much prefer working with cotton threads. Yeah, for the stitching, I really like the cotton threads. Although I'm going to order, um, you know, we've talked in the past about how difficult it is to stitch with the metallic rayon. You know, it just, it's it's not fun. It's like a chore. And this gal over on Instagram, Megan Embroiders, uh, talked about a type of sulky thread, S-U-L-K-Y, and I love their threads that it started with an H, I can't remember, but she says it doesn't fray. You don't need to use a thread and conditioner on it or anything. So I need to order some of that to try. Barbie says, not a, no, not a lot, but I swear I'm not watching any more of your purchasing videos. You enable her, you. <laughs> too funny. I know I got Sue Hiles too, Susan Hiles to buy some stuff. Well, just watch the purchasing video for my shop, right? That's what you want to watch. When I, you know, you're on the newsletter, you'll know when the shop goes open. There's a lot of stuff. Um, there is no wool that's going up for sale in the shop. <laughs> but there's a lot of silk in these little colored kit bags. Gail said, so far I can get away with needlepoint wool as long as I don't do it for hours on end. Wow. I never thought about needle uh, about wool being an issue for people. Wow. So I guess next time I do any kind of a purchasing video, I need to do, you know, enable or alert, but I don't plan. I plan on buying some of this metallic thread 
to try just because sometimes you really want to do that little pop of metallic and I don't want to fight with the rayon threads. I'm just going to couch down the rayon threads I have and I'm not going to buy any more, but there is no reason I need to buy anything. I mean, I can't even imagine having my studio and my house back in shape again after all this. I know it's time to open the doors. I just last night, well, not last night, yesterday, I spent all day yesterday working on the spreadsheet, trying to, you know, make sure I had the pictures right. Um, it's so time consuming. It's like making Etsy listings, only it's for my, my woo shop. And I got all, I think I got all the fabric done. And I think that was the most time consuming. Fiona said, latest Weez is using silk threads, loving the shimmer. Are they strong, Fiona? They don't break? I love silk threads. Sue said, I can stitch on small pieces of wool, but the last time I did the wool needle point, my skin reacted. Oh, gosh. Terry said, some people have allergies to the lanolin that is in the wool. Oh, interesting. Andrea said, I just bought a spinning spindle to learn how to spin fiber. Did you get like a drop spindle, Andrea, or something else? I have a drop spindle, but honestly, I've had it for a year and I haven't played with it yet because that's what I want to do too. Michelle said, I tend to use metallic thread to wrap around beads and sticks. That's a good idea. It makes a good wrap. Although, how do you make sure that the knots stay really tight? Because those things just come untied for me. Barbara says, last week I was enabled to get the book Illuminated Letters Sketchbook, and I'm glad I did. I love being enabled. Ooh, tell us about the book. Is it an actual sketchbook to draw in it, or is it inspiration, or is it a little bit of both? Barbie said, I'm having fun carding my llama wool I got. It doesn't seem to bother me like wool cloth. Oh, nice. So it's um, it's like roving type, you know, in, in that where you can use it as that, or are you going to spin it with something? Drop spindle. Yeah, you'll be very original with that. Um, I think Angie, Fairy Treasures, does the drop spindle, and I know Jude does, but she hasn't been here in ages. Said, I've had it. I just haven't played with it yet. Fiona said, I don't cut them to long links as they fray the more they are pulled through. That makes sense. Yeah, it's something a lot of times people don't think about is, you know, you're stressing your thread every time you pull it through the fabric. So some threads um, are going to fray or break much more easily because each time you go through, it's just sort of like, you know, water on the rock. Barbara says, yeah, actually to draw on, she's got about four pages for each capital letter on grid paper and spaces to draw your own. I'm actually pencil sketching in it to practice. Jane Sullivan is the author. Well, that sounds interesting for people that like to do that kind of stuff. So I think once I get the shop stuff done, it's going to be time to do a bunch of fabric dyeing and painting. Well, the class, then dying and painting. <laughs> Sue says, I have a book that sounds similar to yours, Barbara. I wonder if it's the same one. I bought mine for embroidery inspiration. Barbie said, I don't know what to do with this wool, really. It's six trash bags full that the llama farmer just wanted gone. I went there with a Ziploc baggie trying to get just a tad and ended up taking it all. <laughs> Well, if you put it on your local, um, if you have a local neighborhood group, maybe there's a, a spinner in your area that would like it. Now you need a drop spindle then. Let 
Maybe somebody in the group will trade you for it. Barbara said, yes, it would be a great inspiration for embroidery. You could do these with thread or at least someone could. Yeah, I don't do lettering very well. I don't enjoy it, so I don't do it enough to get any better at it. That's that's the thing I have to remember. When I can say I don't do this very well, it's 99% of the time because I just don't want to put the time in to get better at it, and that's okay. Sue said people pay big bucks for llama yarn. There you go. You need to hook up with um, you need to hook up with Angie. She might spin it. Maybe she'll trade you, you know, some that she spins with her drop spindle. Send some of it back ready to use. Andrea said, uh, why do I use avocado seeds? You mentioned it in a video. Oh, avocado pits make a great dye. You get a lovely, lovely mauve dye. I've got some fabric. Um, depending on how, you know, how many pits you use and how long you let things happen. Michelle said, have you ever made fabric keychains? I have not. I've been thinking about some bookmarks just because it would use up some scraps and I could put some charms on them. I have a whole bunch of charms I want to start using. Fiona said, my sister-in-law gave me two Jacob's sheep fleece for my birthday many years ago. The jumpers have been ripped down several times and still has some life left in the wool. <laughs> Sue says, well, I did say inspiration, not that I'd actually do it. Yeah, I have um, I have a couple of those books that I just look through and I just drool and admire, you know, what other people have done. But it's like, nope, not my thing. Oh, I love that. Barbie, Barbara says, you're totally allowed not to get better at something that doesn't entertain you. That's for sure. Yep. Barbie said, I love avocados just dying just for the gu guacamole it involves. I don't like avocados and I don't like guacamole, but my in-laws have a tree. So uh, when I did the avocado dying, she had been saving the pits for me and just tossing them in the freezer. And then I, I did it and I realized, you know, it's in the pink family. It's not something I enjoy. So... I didn't ask her to save anymore because I didn't care to make pink. Hey, Michelle, how are you doing today? I know, sacrilege to not like, especially California girl, no guacamole. Nope. The taste and the texture, it's a combination. Barbara says, um, I'm sitting here thinking fondly of guacamole that could be lurking nearby. <laughs> I love olives. Does that count? <laughs> All right. I think this one's close to being done. Lucky I haven't been expelled from the state. You got that right. It's good for you. Well, you know, we eat, we eat other things that are good for us. My husband made this wonderful um, meal last night with lots of peppers in it. Michelle said, I'm doing great. Just got back from Montreal, Quebec City, blah, blah, was gone since last Wednesday, getting back to real life. Were you doing anything fun there? Andrea says, my husband will turn into an avocado soon, I think. Sandy said, I saved the avocado skins in pits, then mix with yellow onion skins, makes the most incredible bronze colors. Oh, well, that's that's something to try. Okay, I might give that a try. Bronze I can work with. Michelle said, to those who avocado dye, do you do anything to set the color after? I never have, but I feel like I should. You know, um, I have... The only things I have ever set, and I, I'm not really doing it to set it, but the rust to give it a soak um, afterwards to stop the change. I don't set any of my stuff. Barbie says, I think we need a guacamole challenge. I mean, an avocado dyeing challenge. 
Barbie, Barbara said, it's good for you. Guacamole is quite often our vegetable for the day and the margarita is the fruit. Sandy just lets it die. Yeah, that that's, I just, um, lets it dry, not die. Wow. We're not so good on the vegetables around here. Corn on the cob. <laughs> Barbara is a girl after my own heart. There you go, Barbie. Uh, I know not all this is there. Yeah, Terry and Gail, awesome shares. I really appreciate it. I love that we can give you guys some exposure when you're here and people that watch the replay can see it. I like the onion skins too. My, my thought on all the dying thing is there are people and there are books you can buy that will tell you all the things to do to make your natural fiber, your natural dying color fast or, or more like color fast and more permanent. And I just don't have the energy to put that in my brain. It's, it's like school and it takes some of the spontaneity out of it for me. And so I admire the people that do it, but it's not me. Michelle says, thanks, Sandy, for the rusty color tips. <clears throat> Sue said, a friend just brought over some green beans from her garden. That will be my taste of summer in the winter. How nice. Michelle said, I was dropping my son off in Montreal for a semester abroad and then a vacation with my husband. I had never been to Quebec City. So beautiful. Oh, how lovely. Did you get any um, shopping in for good oldie stuff? Michelle says, I'm like you. I don't have the energy for all that because I don't work a lot with fabric and I have other things I want to learn more. Yeah, and that's kind of what motivated my big you know, this big shop restocking that I'm doing is realizing, well, I've got so many beautiful things and they don't excite me anymore. I want to learn how to do other things and I want to explore. It's not even that I want to focus on a certain area. It's just that I know that, you know, I don't have enough hours in the day, even though this is the kind of stuff I'm doing all the time, except for right now where I'm just doing shop stuff. It's like, I want to get back to my leaves. I have a couple of leaf projects I really want to try. Vinegar can set the color. There you go. I love getting color on fabric and color on paper, but I don't care because most of the time, you know, my stuff is going to go in a book or on an art project. I'm not doing anything for clothes. There are some of the gals I see that are, you know, making beautiful baby clothes. And of course, you've got to really worry about, you know, what you're putting close to your baby's skin. Margarita challenge. I, well, if I was younger, I could get into that. I can't, I can't believe I used to do shots of tequila very easily. Now, one margarita and I have a headache. Michelle says it weighs on me that I have so many beautiful things I don't use. I am planning a purge as well. I just haven't mentally gotten there yet. And you know, that's the key. It's a mental adjustment that you have to make that you're ready to move on. And, but I'll tell you what, I, once I hit that point when I was ready, it's like, oh man, this, this is it. I could look at all my stuff and say, yes, no, maybe. And I also gave myself permission. You know, I pulled a bunch of stuff and said, okay, I'm ready to let all this go. And then as I was divvying it up and packaging it, I said, mm, no, I'm going to keep that. Oh, I'm going to keep that. So I gave myself grace to change my mind. And I didn't change my mind that often. But, but I did. And I didn't beat myself up over it. And I'm super excited about the idea of putting the space back together again. Yeah, Gail, and that, that stinks about getting older and not being able to drink so much. An ice cold margarita. My thing is I can have a margarita. I just don't need to have a huge margarita. But it's just the two of us here. So uh, Lenderful is a big margarita. 
my mom's here, we can have a margarita because then it'll split three ways and I won't get a headache. Because there's never a good time to have a headache, right? I think if you try to get rid of stuff when you're not in the right mindset, you're just going to, you're going to feel horrible about the whole process. You're not going to enjoy it. And I was having fun. I mean, I was curating these kits. So there's like, there's cotton pattern fabrics, there's silk, there's some um, fancy shiny boho trims, there's sari pieces, there's fibers, and all these different colors. And I had such a good time putting them together because I was like, yep, yeah, I'm ready to let these go. I discovered I don't like patterns. I can let the patterns go. I discovered I had more upholstery material that I could use. So I picked just a few of my favorites, let the rest go. The boho trims, not my thing, letting 99% of it go. And then it became fun. Even though I want to be doing other artsy things, it became fun to go through stuff and see you know, okay, what can I combine to make, you know, a good kit so that somebody can then take it and go do something else with it. Michelle says, I love mixing the colors to see how the fabrics look as part of the fun. Usually add brown to everything to give it a vintage look. Yeah, I think the, the first batch of fabric dyeing that I'm going to do next is going to be with paint water because I love to take my big tubs and then I go for the paint bottles that are almost empty because I don't use that much, you know, regular paint anymore. And I'm trying to use those up and just kind of mix colors that I like in the tub, add water to make sure the fabric doesn't get too stiff. And then I just toss the scraps in and see where they go. And if nothing else, they're great little scraps for slow stitching or clusters. Fiona said, I have never had a margarita. Plenty of single malts have made up for that. <laughs> Sue said, will you be able to go live with us while your mother is visiting? Yes. She comes in on a Tuesday and she already knows I have the live on Wednesday. And then she leaves the following Tuesday. So, Margaret, good early morning to you. I don't think I've ever had a single malt. I do like beer, though. Margaret said, I used to love margaritas. Sadly, I can't drink anything anymore. My system doesn't cope with alcohol anymore. That's just that. I think that the wrong thing about getting older. As we get older, we should be able to eat and drink anything we want. That's my thought. Ooh, that's going to make some nice little things there. Wait a minute. What did I miss, Michelle? Let's see. Mich oh. Working for a state company didn't help. Yeah, you would end up with so many things. Whiskey is more popular on your side of the pond. Oh, interesting. Sandy says, that's the key for me. I can let it go knowing it's going into the hands of someone that is going to use it. Yes. You know, and then I look forward to if it's someone I know, I look forward to seeing the things that they create with it. Not that that's a hint or anything to anybody. But, um, you know, I love it. If people buy something from my shop and then they show me what they've done with it. I love it. Whiskey is more popular. I think I've only tried a sip of whiskey. It's not my thing. I could do brandy. Oh, man, I used to do brandy. All kinds of stuff. Yeah, alcohol and me, not so much anymore, which is okay because it's the calories that I don't need. All right, the next one, which won't have anything stitched yet, I can do better. But, you know, I, I keep telling myself as I'm going through this, this purge is I had such a good time finding these things. And I had such a good time experimenting to say, well, I like doing this. I'm not so crazy about doing that. So it's time to, to move it on. And stuff that I thought, you know, last year when I, I did a huge clean out, I thought, oh, I got to keep this. And then I looked at it again. It was like, nope. I kept it for a year and it didn't do anything for me. So off it goes. If 
Fiona said, not sure, Gail. A single malt comes from one distillery. Whiskey is a blend of different types to the recipe. Do not confuse them as they taste completely different. Oh, interesting. Margaret says, hi, Terry. Did not realize you are here. Yeah. She's the rock star. Terry and Gail getting everybody's stuff out there. So sorry, this isn't a very exciting anything to be watching. That's why the conversation is so important because sometimes I just need the downtime of doing something that's kind of mindless. Plus, this has to get done. So I'd rather, you know, if I've got, you know, chores that have to get done, aren't they so much more fun when you can do them with somebody else? <laughs> Michelle said, Terry, love the roses you put in your shop. Aren't they pretty? There is a sale going on in my Etsy shop. I didn't post it or anything in the group, but there is a sale going on over there. And after I get my physical shop stocked up, I've got a bunch of stuff to get in the Etsy shop. Chores with friends. Anyone want to clean the toilets with me? Well, you know, that one you might be on your own. <laughs> But it does make things easier if you can think of something that you can do with friends. Fiona said, only too happy to promote my heritage and lead to the water of life in Scotland. <laughs> my son's girlfriend has visited Scotland. I guess she lived there for a little while working someplace there. And she just, she loves it. I anticipate that the, my son and his girlfriend will be going to Scotland sometime soon. Sandy says, that's so funny. I've been crafting and listening. Totally forgot you were also sewing. Nope, that's it. I love to hear that you guys are working on stuff too, not hanging. I, you know, last week I was doing the painting. It was something to watch, but it's not a chore. This is a part of the process. I discovered this is something I learned last week is that I did not enjoy painting on the backgrounds that weren't stitched down. So easy solution then just get them stitched down. Just get them stitched down and then I can paint them and then I'll have some more backgrounds, which I may or may not cut apart. I'm still thinking I might cut apart all the ones I painted and then patch them together for either new journal backgrounds or vessels. I'm not sure. Can you, can you see I'm kind of on a trend for vessels? I think. <laughs> Terry said, thank you, Michelle. I've had the kit together for a while. My printer died. Then the blues festival and not feeling well, happy to have the listings done. Oh, when you get, when, when life bowls you over, well, tell us about the blues festival, Terry. How wonderful was it? I hope you made a ton of sales, get you through the winter months. I bet it was glad you were glad to get home and sleep in your own bed too, right? All right, I can tell I got to get this center section. Yeah, got some more of these squares of felt. Be felt. It will be good to use up. Might just make a whole bunch of patchwork things. Ah, Michelle, you have a winner. She, Terry said, I'll do the sink and tub if you do the loo and the floor. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Michelle said, I think it's normal to have one part of every craft project that isn't my favorite. I hate binding my books. Making them, yes. Binding them, no. I opt for no-sew bindings a lot. Yeah, I'm not a fan of really big books that I have to bind which is why I'm moving to making more smaller artist books that, um, that I don't have to do that to. All right. This one's going to be tricky to figure out. You know, I'm going to save that aside. Let's go to this other bigger one. So Michelle says, Terry and I have a date coming up now. I think I just need to bring my broom and apron. <laughs> 
That would be fun if you could do house chores with a friend. That would really be fun. Oh, there is another needle there. All right, Sue, you were right to give me a bad time. Michelle said, binding books is not my favorite either. Yeah. Gail's off for tea. The music was fabulous. The fireworks are always great. Lots of happy customers. Whoops, wait a minute, Sue. I missed something. Um, oh, Michelle, Sue said, I'd happy, I'm ha I'd be happy to sew in the bindings, but struggle to make the pages. Um, talking fabric, not paper. Yeah, I want to make some fabric books. That's the other big thing after this um, shop stock. Did I actually get some of this sewn? Oh, no, this is just glued. Okay. Margaret says, I love all types of making a book, although some bindings are a challenge. Yeah, I, I discovered early on that doing a whole lot of fancy bindings was not something that excited me, so I let that go. Because, again, there are people that that's something that they really thrive on. We sold 20 or so of my painting class samples. Oh, that's terrific. That's nice. So you have to have those on hand for the class, and then you're able to turn around and sell them. That's terrific. Michelle says, glad you had a good time, Terry. Sue, I think you and I could be book buddies. We would each do the part the other one struggles with. <laughs> Yeah, you could do some round robin stuff. Somebody starts one part of it, passes it on to somebody else. Barbie said, I love the binding process. Wish we could do a co-op. Isn't that interesting? I love that. I love our very varied personalities, our varied skills, interests, all that good stuff. There's an old book um, about art journals. Is it called True Colors? I think. And absolutely beautiful where I don't remember how many artists, maybe six or seven people, they all started a book and picked a color and then they passed the books along from, you know, so they each did a page in each other's books. It was really neat. I'm not good at follow through or organizing something like that. But if somebody wanted to do some kind of an organizational project and use the, the Facebook group for it, um, hit me up and we can chat about it. I would support you, even though I know that I would stink at follow through. Michelle said, I like altered books because there's no binding. There you go. Terry said, I have sold two framed original paintings this summer and two mixed media works. That's terrific. Big wins, big wins to keep you moving on your artistic path. Barbie said, for me, the binding part is playing, paying homage to all my artist ancestors. Do you come from an artistic family or are you meaning artist ancestors in general? Sue said, I've seen round robin doll projects and quilt projects. Very cool results. Yeah. Margaret said, I like learning new bindings, but when I'm making journals to sell, I only use three whole pamphlet binding. I do use other bindings for my own artist books. Yeah, that I think that would be me. If I wanted to learn a new one, like I really like, um, and is it Sophie McCourt that does the, uh, I know a lot of people do them, but she's the one I first saw do them, the open spine bindings. And I think that looks fabulous, but I don't think I would ever try to, I don't think people would be willing to pay what some of those things would be worth for the time that it takes you. Michelle says, Terry, that's so great. Kudos to you for putting yourself out there and being a working artist. Yes. Congratulations from Gail and Margaret and all of us. That's just, you work so hard for us. I'm just excited to, to hear that you've had that success. Water, Susan. Water would be a good idea. It's really hard for me to admit that I do not have that follow through for that kind of projects because I do. I love the idea 
but I think I like the idea more than obviously more than the execution since I don't follow through with it. Barbie said, just ancestors in general. My mom and grandmas were sewing people. Totally, totally utilitarian, but tailoring skills out the roof. Oh, wow. Michelle said, I love her open spine bindings and her work. I hated to see what she went through with Willow Wanders. I don't know all the details about that, but I'm sorry when any of our artistic folks suffer at the hands of others. And if I make little knots that stay on top and don't go through, it's just one more thing of texture. Gail says, Barbie, I come from that type of background too. I think my mom and grandmas and great grandmas when I'm stitching. My grandmother made a lot of my clothes when I was younger. They were never quite the, the colors and the styles, of course, that I wanted as a kid. But it was awesome that she could do that. Yeah, I don't know, Michelle, if you feel like you can give us any kind of an idea what happened to Sophie and Willa Wanders. It was Sophie McCourt, Margaret, um, that I was talking about. Always seem to pull the needle out or the thread out of the needle at least once when I'm stitching something. Whew. Hot flash. So this is a bigger piece. I don't know if that might be a wall hanging. Maybe that would be another tree background. I got to get back. I was going to get to the trees and honestly, I couldn't even find, could not even find the thread that I needed for the trees. That's how much of a disaster it is around here. It's like, okay, it's probably on my desk buried underneath all the scraps from the last couple weeks of lives, but couldn't find it. Sue said, I will inevitably try to put my needle through the knot on the back of my work. Oh, gosh, yes, that. Me too. Especially when I'm working on this little basket. This one wasn't so bad, but working on the knotted one, that's what made this one so much more difficult, is trying to get the needle through the knots uh, when I was doing the base. And because the knots were all different sizes, I, it was harder to go in between. But I saw some things on Pinterest yesterday. They were vessels. They were coiled vessels with um, with holes, like windows in them. And they're absolutely exquisite. And I thought, ooh, I bet I could make that work with the knotted ones. Margaret said, I'm in the fodder school, hadn't been aware of anything. Sad when that happens, yeah. I'm so behind on the classes. The only classes I'm in right now are the ones that Fiber Arts take too. And I haven't even watched the videos, let alone started all the projects. Although now that I've done this little coiled basket thing, I'm thinking I need to go back because I'm in um, a basketry class and see about, you know, I've got the materials to make them with um, fibers, with rattan and some other stuff, reeds. So maybe I'll go back and take a look at that. Barbara wants to know, are you liking it, Margaret, the fodder school? And Barbie said, Michelle, can you share what happened? It it's difficult when you come in late to something. And if you don't feel comfortable sharing, I understand that too. Uh, 
I love that we can gather around and support each other, though, when we have sticky situations, because it happens. Um, personalities clash. Situations don't unfold the way we want it to. It happens. I had... <coughs> so yesterday, I was trying to, you know, I, I'm still getting caught up on my comments. I'm way behind on my videos. Michelle said there are allegations from several teachers and some non-teachers about plagiarism and bullying. I don't want to say more if it's not known. Understood. I do know that Sophie has been outspoken. That's too bad. I had, um, so I was feeling really good going through my comments yesterday. I had comments from people that were obviously hearing me as me and sort of validating my idea to just be myself, not trying to, to do something else you know, in my videos. And then somebody watched a video from last year. So I was feeling really good. You know, I was like, oh, this is pretty good. And then somebody watched a video from last year and she said, well, you should have added beads of different sizes to the project. And you really need to edit out all the lip smacking because it's really annoying for those of us listening to it. And I'm thinking, do I lip smack in my videos and sort of like brought me right back down. To, but, you know, I understand I have people's voices that are hard for me to listen to. I'm just, I'm letting it go. I've had people tell me I breathe too loudly on video. Sorry, it's just me. You can watch things with the sound off and the closed captions. Barbara said, I signed up to take Don Sokol's songbook class. It's generating journal pages from favorite songs and doodling and whatever else. Barbara, that's right up your alley. That is so perfect. Margaret said, Barbara, parts of it, some of it are a bit ho-hum, but a few classes have inspired me. It got me going at the time, and I'm not sorry I enrolled. That's good. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things um, that happens to all of us, it's like, you know, you, you don't really, there's nothing absolutely new. And it's just like our take on it that might be the kickstart for somebody. And I have a hard time with that because as I'm working on my class, it's like, well, how can I make this unique? Well, I can't really, I can just make it mine. Barbara said, I know what you're saying, Margaret. Sometimes a kickstart is a great thing. I'm typically bad at follow through, though, so I'm not making promises. Yes. Gail said, oh, you're fine, Susan. I have a favorite artist that I follow that sniffs all the time in her streams. I had to stop watching her, but I'm sad about it. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. There's certain voices that have certain sounds in them that are hard sometimes. You know, and I just turn the sound off and watch what's Closed captions. Terry said, I'm glad that you are breathing. Exactly. Still here. Michelle said, I do like the ugly art club projects. They mix a lot of paint, paper, and fabrics in a nice grungy style. One of these days, though, I am going to make a short post about the, uh, the word ugly. It just really bothers me, but I don't want to attack the club because I think the ugly art club does a great thing for people. I just don't like the name. I really don't like the name because you, you keep that negative thought in your head from the word ugly. Barbara says, Susan, what you just said makes me want to make a video with lots of lip smacking. Do it, do it. We can lip smack in, in a uh, lip smack in chorus, right? Terry said, 28 peoples and 17 likes. Can I have some more? Hey, Janet, how are you doing? Fiona, yes, exactly. She said the same thing. There are some people I can't listen to because of the pitch of their voice. I love watching them craft, so I mute and read the subtitles. Win-win. Yep. And when I was doing a lot of paper, I could not watch um, Shoot. I've forgotten her name. The Gal with the Bird. The bird just was like fingernails on a chalkboard to me. So I just turned the sound off and watched with the closed captions. Yeah, the word ugly. That, that's my only issue with it is the word ugly. But the ugly art club and the reasoning behind it is 
a thousand percent supported by me. We can all have our preferences, but the difference is why say something nasty. Exactly, Michelle. Turn down the volume. Don't walk, watch. Why criticize? Don't get it either. I've been criticizing my videos for talking too little, talking too much, picking the wrong music. You can't win. I know, Michelle. I know exactly. Michelle said in Quebec, I went to the traveling bad art exhibit and it was great. Yeah, you can't do closed captions with live streams. However, when you go back in, if you watch it as a replay, you can usually get the closed captions. But yeah, you missed the, the thing about being live. Maybe some people don't know about the mute and closed. Possibly. Possibly. Um, for any of you guys watching, you can mute your YouTube videos and turn on the little CC and you will get the captions at the bottom of the page. The girl with the bird. Yeah, Barbie. It just, you know, and that's fine. That's her. There's nothing wrong with having a bird. At one time in my 20s, I had five birds. Um, so birds are fine. That particular one, the, the, the pitch of it is hard for me. So I just would watch them with the sound off. But I mean, some people are just natural born complainers. That's all they want to do is just whine. It's like their, their life's mission to make somebody else miserable. Michelle said, bad art was defined by art found at yard sales and flea markets or donated by family members that were so bad for a variety of reasons. My husband said it was the best gallery show he's been to. Did they... So... It was just you found it and you put that in the exhibit or did you do something to it? Because I've seen some videos where people um, buy like thrift store or flea market art and then they remake it into something else, which is also really cool. Margaret said, yes, Fiona, some voices are like that for me too. Not their fault. And I would never make a comment. One of my artists sniffs a lot because she has allergies, which I can relate to. Yeah. We've all got something. I know in my videos, my S's, when I say certain things, my S's have like a little pop on them. And I'm in this one YouTube group where they talk about taking all those sounds out. I'm sorry. I love you guys, but I'm not going to spend four hours editing the audio on my videos. I'm not going to do it because then I would never have any time to make my art. Gail says, that's true. My father, bless his heart, is quite the critic and complainer, but I'm but I love him and glad at 90, he's still here to complain. Exactly. Yeah, the girl with the bird is a YouTuber. Um, very prolific YouTuber. Margaret says, if your nose is dripping all the time, there are two options, sniff or dab your nose with a tissue all the time. I can relate. Yep. Barbara says, I think I know and notice the artist who sniffs so much, Gail, but decide I don't care. I love her streams and art for the most part. <laughs> hey, Shauna. Michelle said, Susan, instead of Ugly Art Club, I was thinking it should be the Messy Art Club. It's a, the, again, the, the principles behind the Ugly Art, art Club are commendable. My pet peeve is that we all too often, we all too often let ourselves hear these negative words and you hear them, you know, enough times, it takes so many more positive words to wipe out the negative ones. And that's hard for a lot of us. If we don't have things happening in our life, in our daily life, or maybe you live alone, you're not talking to a whole lot of people. And so you hear the word ugly and silly and stupid and all these other words, um, they stick in your head. They stick in your head and then they affect the way you're trying to do anything else. It was non-professional art that was hung as is. Descriptions of where they came from and what made them bad was very humorous. That sounds like a lot of fun. Barbara said, I've also seen a girl with a bird and love the bird sounds in the background. Um, I used to have a parakeet who made great bird words in the house. Sure missed that. Yeah, that's not, I wonder if that exhibit is is online anywhere. Uh, 
Yep. If you don't like the channel, move on. No need to be rude or cruel. Yeah, I've been really fortunate. I mean, to me, that wasn't cruel. That was the gal that, that made the comment to me about lip smacking. It was like, okay, you know, that was an opinion and I'm okay. Exactly, Barbara. That's why I keep track of all the, the wonderful things you guys say to me and you guys should do it too. Don't like, just like I don't mind dogs. It's sort of like also, you know, you go to, when you, when you have kids and you go to a restaurant and your kid's crying, you feel like everybody else in the restaurant is, you know, really mad at you. But the parents that have kids and that are out without them are probably saying, thank God it's not my kid that's crying. <clears throat> Just so important for us to support one another in our ventures. It takes a lot of guts to share your art. It takes a lot of guts to make a video that shares your art. Y'all are making me miss my birds and my dogs. Ah, Sue. Wish you could, you know, come share them. Michelle said, my favorite comment on my YouTube was, I'm sure you are a lovely person, but you are annoying. <laughs> you are so not annoying. Oh, that's too much. Wow. People are strange. The breathing one just gets me because the, the breathing comment I got I was making a point. I was walking up and down this hill and I was making a point about it. And so obviously I'm walking up and down the hill. I'm going to be breathing kind of hard, but oh, well. Dogs bark. Yep. Well, you want to be able to like, I don't mind Zoe doing the occasional bark on a live stream. If I'm doing a video that's going to be around, you know, where I'm expecting people to watch. Because not the live streams don't get that many replays, uh, which is why I appreciate it when you guys comment on them. Michelle's like, how do I want to answer that? I think I answered it depends on who you ask. Yep. We just can't please everybody. I remember four years ago being told um, I could get some new clothes, you know, for the horse show clothes, because I was showing horses at the time, uh, when I lost some weight. And I look at myself in those pictures back then, and I thought, man, I look just fine back then. I was like a size 12 to 14. I was totally fine. There was nothing wrong with that. But I took that to mean, you know, how horrible I was. There was a... Um, was it a video or it was a post? I think I saw it on Facebook yesterday where there's an old horse. He's like a 15 year old stallion who um, goes to this rest home and goes in and visits people. Terry said to think they're people who are paid to breathe into microphones. Exactly. Horse shows. Michelle says horse shows. Susan, is there anything you haven't done? So many things. So many things. I was much younger then and in better shape. I could heft a bale of hay around back then. Yeah, size 12s. Wish I could too. Janet said, I do hate when YouTubers keep saying sorry for this noise or that noise. Oh, okay. Good point, Janet. All of you that make a video or make a post, stop apologizing. Stop apologizing. You're putting yourself out there. You don't need to apologize. I mean, if you have something catastrophic happen in the middle of a video, okay, say, you know, sorry for that interruption and then get back to it. But one of my pet peeves is people put this down. Well, this isn't very good. Or I'm sorry, this isn't, you know, this isn't quite finished yet. No, just, just show it and then move on. Your video would probably be a lot shorter if you weren't apologizing through the entire thing. Shorter videos, good. Th yeah, and there's no need to apologize. It's like... We, we get into this mindset where we need to apologize for, for living our lives, and we don't. Like we were just saying, you know, if we don't like a YouTuber, you move on to the next video. 
Barbie says, I can't imagine how much guts it takes to make a YouTube about your art. I get unglued when I have to do a presentation of my photo work to my clients. I get all needy wanting them to love the images. Yes. Yes, exactly. Same thing. But then I realized, you know, not everybody's going to like the stuff that I'm making. Um, I don't like all the stuff I make sometimes. Sometimes I make it just to learn that I don't like doing that. Friend, do any minute for dream work. Barbara, how nice. Yeah, a quick excuse me. Something, something happens, but there are some times I've seen a video where they were apologizing through the whole video for one thing or another. Michelle said, I think women are taught to apologize for everything. Men who make videos don't apologize. Bingo. Bingo. Yeah. The uh, Zoom sessions for October are up. So if you guys want to join, there's two sessions in October or in September. Sorry, I think I said October in the post earlier, but it's actually the September ones. The other thing I, I liked um, somebody said recently is you don't need to, you don't need to beg and ask everybody, you know, subscribe, subscribe, like, subscribe. I do ask for likes here in the, the live streams, but in my videos, I don't ask for likes. I don't ask for subscribes anymore. Michelle said, um, some men do the gay ones I've watched do. <laughs> Ah, uh, so Barbara's going to spread out her dollar. She won't be at the next uh, Zoom session. We've got some new people coming. Andrea's going to be at one. Malaya's going to be at one. Barbie says, I'd rather eat a bug. <laughs> Spreading out the dollars is a good thing. I just don't want to commit to attending the Zooms. You don't have to commit. If you decide the day before you want to go, just make sure you give me enough time to be able to email you the link. That is all. I, uh, what kind of a bug would that be, Barbie? <laughs> September 15th. I can't remember who's in what one. Yeah, it's just, you know, just so I can give you the, the sign-in stuff. Just need 24 hours. I'll check it in the morning of. Margaret, what are you working on lately? I don't think I caught up with what you've been doing. Yeah, it is wonderful to meet each other face-to-face. So Susan's going to the September 6th one. Sue Brown's on the 15th. Andrea, you're on the 6th, I think, right? Because it's going to be evening for you. A lot of family commitments in September. Oh, wow, Gail. Hope that's a good thing. Yeah, September is busy, crazy busy for me too. So I'm looking forward to October. And I can kind of nest a little bit more here. This thing's going to be wild when it gets painted because there's so much pattern. I realize this will be the last of the ones I'm doing. Oh, not all good ones. I'm sorry, Gail. That's icky. Sorry for that. Oh, you've been sick again last week, Margaret? That's not good. You're gathering stuff to do some eco printing. That's another thing on the list. My freezer is still full of leaves. I have got to get them out of there. You're on the 15th, but we'll book the 6th too because I want to work. Well, don't, don't repay for anything. Just tell me, you know, just take a look at the times. We can figure it out. You're in the UK, right? So I'll take a look at the times again. You can take a look at the times and figure out, and I can move you if you need to. In the dirty pot with Nicola Brown. Nice. Oh, 
Yeah, very easy just to switch your days if we need to. I mean, I wish there was one day that worked or one time that worked for all of us, but with people on both sides of the pond, it's hard. Gail said, have you ever shown how you store your fabric pieces? Is it by color or what? Oh, um, there should be a video of my fabric closet. And that's the, the yardage. And then my other stuff I have in clear bins on the shelf. And they are sorted by color. Good point. Michelle says, that's a bummer, Gail. I hate it when I know there are tough things on my calendar. Make sure to build in some me time. Yes. Oh, Gail has a sick sister who's going to have surgery, but don't know when yet. Oh, I hope all goes well. You know, and I will say I do have, um, so like for clusters and things, the small pieces, I mean, when the fabric is, you know, like this, they're all sorted by color. My dyed stuff is all by color. Oh, but I do keep my shears separate and they're in like little baggies and then all the baggies are in one clear bin because I use them differently. Um, silk is actually kept different. Kept. I have two bins of silk, one patterned and one colored. Hey, Angie. Oh, Andrea and Angie need to talk. Andrea just bought a drop drop spindle and you that's what you do right angie do i remember that right i don't think i got you mixed up with somebody else sue brown says my cottons are sorted by color everything else is more or less jumbled together i have a lot more cotton than anything else yeah and i have i mean the overflow of stuff um is in big like 18 inch square bins out in the garage uh, my colored lace is separate from my white and cream lace and my dyed lace is separate from everything else. But that's why there's just way too much of everything and why this, this big purge is so necessary. I get the hiccups. <laughs> Somebody will probably leave me a comment saying I should have edited out the hiccups. Oh, well, too bad. <laughs> Not going to happen. Yeah, Angie, have you done a video on your drop spindle? Or maybe we need to schedule a, a Facebook thingy. Oh, man, my cheeks are like on fire. Wow. Wow. I don't know if it's a hot flash, hot flash, or if it's a rosacea hot flash. Hey, Kathy. You finally get a break. I'm going to make that video you asked for. I'm not, I decided I wasn't going to do it in the live. I'm going to make a video um, on the little basket thing. When you have less, or when you're going through your purge thing, you'll start to get ideas, too, about how you, you – that's the other thing, how you work. I'm not hydrating. Yeah, that's probably it, Michelle. I have changed. Oh, you spin on a wheel. You have not used a spindle. Okay. Um, when you change the way you work, you change the way you store your materials. And that's something, you know, when you start using fabric for different things, you might decide you need to store it differently. So it's really important to think about how you use it. Oh, don't get me started. I don't want a spinning wheel. Don't want to learn how to do that. Margaret says, how I store and categorize my stuff depends a lot on how much I have of something. Mostly it's sorted into categories and into colors. Yeah, rosacea. Plus we had a lot of um, really spicy food last night. And I think that tends to get me the next day with rosacea. I've been really fortunate um, for, I don't know, about seven years or so, maybe longer. I was on a lot of antibiotics for the rosacea. And luckily I've been able to stop that. So it just means periodically I will have these flushes. 
at least they're not painful, just hot. So I'm grateful for that. Yeah, when I was realizing all the stuff that I like to use for my clusters, I thought I need to have all the clustery kind of stuff together. Margaret said, I do have a large box of blue and white fabrics because I love blue and white so much. I, you know, I think that's why I ended up with so much blue because I've got, you guys can't really see them here. I've got my blue and white plates around here. And then all our, our dishes are the blue Danube, blue and white, but I've not made it much in blue and white, which is really kind of interesting. He also, when I had hot flashes, I always got red in the face and it always seemed to be at work. Yeah. When I was still working in corporate, that's when I had the uh, rosacea really bad. And then so much antibiotics, then, you know, overtaking antibiotics for so long then would cause other issues. And I was really glad when I was able to get off of those. So I can deal with the periodic red face. Sue said, yeah, I've had to rearrange some things due to my changes in the work I've been doing lately. Yeah. And then, you know, you go through another change and you rearrange again. And then every time we rearrange, we get reacquainted with our art supplies, which is also a good thing, right? Gail says, I love blue and white china too. My kitchen has blue and white plates all around the soffit or whatever that's called. Yeah. Our last house, we had a huge kitchen and we had so much blue and white decorated every, and I, I collected blue and white um, everything, blue and white um, plates and mugs and pictures. I still have a lot of the blue and white pictures. This house is super small compared to the last one. But here in the living room, uh, right above me here, there's this long set of three windows and above them are blue and white plates. And then in the kitchen above the window are the blue and white plates. And I also have a collection of those black toll trays that uh, were great at the old place. And I don't have room for all of them here. So I've got one up. Lori says, so true about reorganizing and discovering supplies that you forgot you had. Yep. And the other Lori said, question, how do you folks store thrift store close, close signs? Wait a minute. You don't mean like the signs that say closed on them. The close, close finds. Okay. How do you store thrift store clothes finds? Do you leave them in or do you cut them up? I used to leave them as they were. And then I discovered that I really liked them better when I cut them up and I had them more like yardage of fabric. And then I saved all the seams and pockets and buttons and that sort of thing. I'm curious to see what other people do. Michelle said, I think we should have a wish list gift registry of things we all love and use. So when we are doing purges, we know who to pass it on to. You know, that's a good idea, Michelle. Maybe what I'll do is make a Google Doc. I, I hesitate to do it in the group because I don't want to get where people are doing like happy mail crazy kind of stuff. But that's a good idea. Um, Barbie's got all this, you know, wool there might be somebody else that wants to trade her with something like that. I'll set that up on Google Docs. Margaret says, I love blue and white china too. I haven't made anything with the fabrics except a couple of book covers. Want to make a jacket, patchwork jacket. Gail says, Lori, I'm cutting them all up. It takes a lot of time though, but that's what I'm doing this summer, having to find out how to store all that too. Yeah, no worries, Lori. We figured it out. You got there. Yeah, Sue, I will totally do that. Um, I don't think I'm going to put it on my website. I will mention it in the group and I will put it, you know, we can put it here in the description of the lives. So that's a great idea. And, and then basically you can put your contact information so people can, you know, talk to one another about it away from the group and away from the lives and away from the chat. So thank you. Sherry says, I may have to downsize my supply storage due to the high cost of rent. May have to move to a smaller place. No art space is possible. Oh gosh. 
That sounds miserable. Yeah, Michelle, people could let organize trades or purges among themselves if they knew who might be interested. Exactly. I can let go of things if I know I can place it with someone who will use it. Exactly. Barbie will gladly trade llama wool for goodies. Okay, this is okay. I will do that. Look for an announcement later today. I'm just going to, it's just a simple Google Doc. And you'll, anybody can go in there and edit it, add to it and read it and con, you know, but it's only going to be listed here. Yeah. And oh, Lori says maybe what people are looking for. I'll do two. Um, well, let's see, or should we do it in one? Well, it, it's not going to be, it's not like we're going to have a thousand listings on it. And maybe um, whether you're willing to do international stuff. Janet said, my art space is my dining room. I don't eat in there anyways. <laughs> yeah, we always eat on our lap. We'll have to come up with some creative ways, Sherry, for you to still be able to have an art space because it's going to be important for your creativity. Barbie feels like little Bo Peep with all these bags of wool. The, so the Google Doc will be on um, my Google Drive. So it'll just be in a folder there and you guys will only have access to that folder. I know Margaret global postage is so much would love to be able to join in this. Well, you can still put something in there because you don't know, you know, you're not the only person in Australia. Um, there might be a, I know uh, Sharon might like to do that kind of a trade. She's in Australia. Um, I don't know what postage is like between Australia and New Zealand, but that's another option. Laurie said, my art area was my bedroom. Now is my living room. I get to choose what goes where. Oh, I've heard of a few people doing that, um, that they've been able to swap their master bedroom. The nice thing is they've got the sink there. You can tell I just gave up on the stitching. It's like, nope. Michelle cuts up her thrift store clothes. The thing for me, the reason that I started cutting mine up is it was so much easier to store them because, you know, when you've got, um, if you've got something that's got a flat felt seam, it's so fat that you can't, you fold it and then you end up with all those like wobbly, you know, stacks of things. But I save all my seams up. Do I have any here? I don't have any here, but whenever I cut those seams off. I save all of those and I'm making a basket with some of it. I've dyed it. Uh, you can use it for journal ties, all kinds of things. Gail said my craft art studio is most of my son's old bedroom. Have to share it with my dog grooming area too. Sherry said my art space is currently in the living room. This house is long and narrow. No, no dining room in this house. Yeah. I mean, I've got, one of the th we've got this is a three bedroom house. One is my husband's office. One is the master, and one is my studio. And the only thing we did was make the, made the doors wider. Well, there's no doors on it actually. It's just open. And then the two hall closets are mine. The hall bathroom is pretty much mine, and half of the living room is mine. The kitchen table is often mine. The sunroom and the garage. Bless my husband's heart. There's no crafting done in the master bedroom or my husband's office. Everything else is fair game here. I hear you, Fiona. Well, it depends on if you think you might have a use for the seams. Okay. Barbie said, I save the backs and sleeves for my thrift clothes. It makes it so much easier to store. Yeah. Save buttons and some pockets. I saved pockets for a long time. Oh, Michelle, that's lovely. If some, does anybody, is anybody familiar with Google Docs? I'm happy to give access to a folder on my Google Drive. I have plenty of room if somebody else wants to organize that, thank you for reminding me that it's okay to delegate things. But I saved these, these seams because let me show you why. If somebody wants to organize it, just um, let me know now or send me a message. Because I've got lots of space on my Google Drive. I pay for the extra space. You're not too thrilled with Google Docs. Um, so I can give you a little walkthrough on that. It's really pretty easy. 
So, I mean, when you've got something like this, this obviously would make a great journal tie. I make knots from it, you know, so I can have a whole row of knots. It would be great as a basket. You can dye it. You can also, I could weave with it. Oh, Michelle, bless your heart. Okay, so what is it we think we want to see in, um, what, trades? Trades list, whatever you, you can call it, whatever you want. We want to see um, in my local, one of my local Facebook groups here, they have offered in search of. Those are the three things I think of. Barbie says, do you remember that Seinfeld episode where about if someone is sponge worthy, that's the way I feel about buttons I save. <laughs> yeah, Gail, I know. Save, save everything. Shirt cuffs. I had an idea for shirt cuffs, people. Have you guys seen Melissa's wrist cuffs that she's been doing? Why not save shirt cuffs and make wrist cuffs? Location, that's a good idea. Add location. Gail, also, you know, send me a note on troubles that you're having with um, Google Docs and I'll try and help you out. And then Michelle, I'll just make a folder and I will send you the link and give you full access to the folder. And then you, I don't mind storing it on mine unless you want to store it, but I have lots of storage space. So you let me know if you want to set up the folder and the link, great, or I can set up the folder. Shirt cuffs make great pockets. They already have buttonholes. That's a good idea too. Wish list. Oh, that's another one. Yes. Let's add wish list. Somebody, well, that'd be what you're looking for, you know, um, but you don't like it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've gotten better at it um, just because the coaching group that I'm in, they use it all the time. All right, anything else that you want to put on this master list? And, you know, it can it'll become a living document so we can add to it. Okay, thank you, Michelle. That's great. If you do it and send it to me, then I'll get it posted in the group and I'll just make it part of the... Um, preliminary stuff here on our lives every week, just so we kind of keep it with us. Yeah, Angie, I just thought of that last night as I was going through my stuff and I found a couple shirt cuffs and I remembered what um, she'd been doing. It was like, oh, that would be a great thing. You know, you've got right there, you, because it's a cuff already, you know, it's pretty sturdy for it because it's probably got some interfacing in it. Okay, Michelle, great. Thank you. Terry, you've never heard of Google Docs? Well, if you have a Gmail account, you have access to Google Docs and Google Drive, which is a great place to store a lot of stuff. And uh, you and I can go through it at any time if you want to get better at it. But it's just basically, yeah, shirt cuffs as bracelets. Absolutely. All right, people, I'm going to go get some tea. Ah, Michelle said she could show you too, Terry. I'm going to go get some tea and relax my throat. Thank you guys for helping me de-stress. And then I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and get the stuff listed. You have a cuff board on Pinterest. Oh, Terry, share that in the group, please. Would love to see it. Thank you for the offer, Michelle. I appreciate you uh, taking care of that for us. All right, everybody. See you later. See you next week. Bye-bye.